Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the filter component. Before we get into this example, you must understand how this works. The filter component takes text that's inside of a collection item and it filters that item in the grid based on the text. So we have our collection list item here. This is Webflow CMS generated. Each one of these pieces of text is a way for this item to be filtered in the grid. We have 2020, blue, fun, CMS false, branding. This one is 2017, red, not fun, use CMS true, web design. These are controlled inside Webflow CMS. We have the year, we have a rich text of branding, web design, we have color in a drop down, we have the toggle, and we have fun. Updating any of these will update that text inside the item and then change how that item is filtered. So updating filters and types and all of that is very easy and very quick and can be managed by you or the client inside editor. You do not need to visibly see this text on the page. It needs to be on the published site, but it does not need to be visible. In all of these examples, we're going to keep the filters visible because we want to show that it's actually working. But if you wanted to hide these on the published site, you can do that. I can hide this right here, just show project name, and it's still going to filter by all of these filter options. It's gonna filter by 2017, red, not fun. Everything is going to work. Does not need to be visible, just needs to be there. Let's jump into examples and see how this works. Let's go through filtering a dynamic list with search. We're going to use a text input. We are going to type what we want to filter by and the grid is going to update in real time. We're not pressing enter. We're not loading a new page. We are searching real time live on the site, on the page. It's going to update and we're gonna see it update. So if I go and filter by search blue, the grid is going to update with only blue options. And if I go and remove blue, we now see all colors again. If I were to filter by dev, development, we're only going to see development options here. And so on. Let me search by, by 2020. And here, 2020 is going to be the only option that shows up here. So here we are filtering by search. It's happening in real time. It is easy, lightweight, and very flexible for the user. We're in Designer and we're going to look at how to set up the page in order to search for elements in real time. The first thing we need to do is have a class applied to our collection list. Note that this is not the collection list wrapper, this is the collection list element. We have a class of collection dash list applied to that. Next, we are going to have a class on our parent element of the text input. Here we have our text field input. It doesn't matter what that class is. We only need to define a parent wrapper of that input. Notice how I emphasized a parent wrapper. It doesn't need to be the direct parent. Here we have a form wrapper. We need that form wrapper in order to get that text field on here. And we have search parent. We can use this element and this class in the JavaScript, but for this example, we are just using our filters wrapper class here. This does not need to be the direct parent as long as it's a parent. So we have our filters wrapper class. It clearly is holding our form block, which has our text field. Nice. And the last thing we need to do is add a data attribute to this text field. And here inside of the text field settings, we're going to filter by asterisk. That's it. Asterisk in our library means everything. So it is searching for everything that we are typing in here. I could type 
project five, I could type development, UCMS true, fun, green, whatever I search, it's going to search for all of the text content inside of that element. This is powerful. It allows people to search for multiple things. They don't have to define what they're searching for. It is great. So put that asterisk in there and that's all you need direct on the text field settings. Let's go into custom code and see how this works. We're in custom code. If you've watched examples one, two, and three, this is very similar. And I even think it's exactly the same as one of them. Even though we're using a search input, all the steps are the same, all the mentality is the same, we are doing everything the same. So let's jump in and check this out. The first thing we are going to do before the closing body tag is add the FN Suite CMS library script. As you can see, this is not the real script file. When we launch the library, we'll have a hosted file available for you. Next, we have our project specific script where we will be running a function that happens immediately. It's going to run this code right away. We are going to create a new instance of our FS library. That FS library instance is going to be targeted at our collection list class, which is the class we gave our collection list element on the page. This whole new instance is being stored in a variable called projects grid, which we are going to use later on down here. Before we get into running that filter, we're going to define our array. And here we only have one filter group. It's a search input and it's only one item in the list. Our filter wrapper is filters wrapper. Again, this is not the direct parent of the text input. It is a parent of the text input. And the filter type is exclusive. We're filtering by one type of text at a time. Searching for blue, it's going to find blue. Nice. And now we have my filters defined. So when we go to our projects grid variable, our new instance, we're going to run the filter component and we're going to feed it the filter array of my filters. This is what we have just defined above to target our search input. And then we also have an animation here. And this animation is going to make everything look nice as it's being filtered in the grid. Enable duration of 200 milliseconds, easing ease out, effects of fade translate at 20 pixels on the Y axis. If you want to customize your animation, please use the script generator. It's going to generate correct and whatever you want that animation to show. And that's all you have to do in order to search for items in real time inside a dynamic list. That's effing sweet.